Greetings everyone, this is Fleet Admiral Port Lexington of the Starfleet called Meriki Command. Meriki Command is part of a roleplay group from Second Life called Starfleet Renaissance. We expanded into Star Trek Online just for the fun of it. And I'm here today to show you around our fleet facilities so you can see what they are. We have four facilities. We have a star base, a Romulan embassy, a Dyson Sphere Spire, and our own Dilithium mine. As you can see, at the moment, I'm at Earth Space Dock. Let me zoom out and show you. This is where everybody goes. It is the main social hub for the Federation side of this game. As you can see, there's a transport room and exchange and requisitions. And down there is the shipyard and the interior of the space station with a very nice ship parked in it. And you can also see that this character, my main character, is sporting the very best elite Mako armour. And if you look closely on his back, you can see that very um, special rifle that takes a while to graft and produce. It actually fires bullets. Let me draw it and show a better look of it. There we are. It's the TR-16B rifle with a transporter on the front. What it does is it shoots a bullet the transporter then teleports the bullet behind the shields of an enemy target so it will hit them straight in the flesh. Very useful against Borg targets because it means you don't have to remodulate your weapon. That's why everybody wants this. They go for about 30 million energy credits on the exchange. I crafted this one and I'm in the process of upgrading it. So I'll put it back on my back. But showing you me is not why I'm here. I'm here to show you Meriki Command's facilities. So first things first, we have to leave Space Dock. So we hit the little beam to ship button on our mini map. So we can leave the main social area for the entire game at Space Dock and appear outside of Earth Space Dock in our ship. Takes a moment to load. Every time you change maps it takes a moment to load. It's a bit like changing regions in Second Life. There it is, I've spaced up from the outside, and here is my ship. It is a tactical escort ship called the Fearless G. The reason it's called the Fearless G is because it's a... I name all my ships Fearless, and this one is the sixth one to bear the name. Although I'm an engineering player, and I should be using an engineering cruiser, I'm actually using a tactical escort ship because it's more firepower. Anyway, let's get going to our starbase, our own personal starbase, not this big hunking social hub called Earth Space Dock. To do that, we go to the minimap and we hit the depart system button. And our ship should warp out into the space between solar systems. 
Away from her. Here we go. Warp speed. And we're changing maps again, just like in Second Life. Takes a moment to load. Now it's asking me, do I want to enter uh, so, uh, the soul system, which is where we just were? Well, since I just came out of it, I don't want to go back in. Instead, I want to go to our fleet starbase, Meriki Command starbase. So we look on the mini map and we select the full map, display big map. And here is the map of the beta quadrant the galaxy. As you can see, up here is my ship. It even has my name. Up here, near that space dock, near Wolf 359. We all know that system. But if I want to go to a fleet star base, I have to look down here to the Alderban sector. Alderban sector. Where it says Federation Fleet Starbase. That's where our starbase is located. And all I have to do is click on that to plot a course to it. And my ship takes off in that direction immediately. I can even hit the quantum slipstream drive to go a bit faster. At the moment I'm travelling at 9.97. If I hit the quantum slipstream, my ship enters the high warp speeds. What speed is it doing now? Warp 34.68. You can tell this game is set 30 years after the normal Star Trek stuff. We're passing by other systems with pop-ups that offer you missions. But we don't want to do those missions, we just want to go to our star base. As you can see my transport engine has shut down because well, actually it's a quantum slipstream engine. It says quantum slipstream here on the button to activate it, but here it says transwarp. And the transwarp engine is shut down now because it can only activate for a short period of time before it overheats and has to go into cool down. Here we are, Federation Fleet Starbase. Every fleet has their base here, but each base is different. They're just all in one location, but on different layers of that location. You'll get used to it, a different instance. Approach Starbase. Now we're going into the solar system with the Starbases. And this is our Starbase. Because we're a fairly new fleet, the Starbase isn't very big at the moment. It's not got all the fancy stuff of some of the big fleets have. You can see on the mini map pictures of the location we're at. And this button here on the mini map brings up information about the fleet. Meriki Command. And the message of the day is a regular fleet action scheduled every Thursday, 7 pm to 9 pm, British summer time. That fleet action, I hold that every week. No one's turned up yet, but I live in hope. And the fleet action will only go ahead if there's enough people to form a fleet action, which requires a team of five. If we look in here, the Starbase is actually called SS Meriki. And the Starbase message of the day. Well done, Meriki Command. 
through your efforts, we now have a tier one star base. It's now time to relax and celebrate what we have achieved together. And under the, the star base tab here, we have our fleet projects. If we click on one of them, you can see there are places where people can contribute to things to help complete the project, like this one up here, Engineering and Operations Duty Officers. It needs five of them to be contributed to fill up that. This one needs Tactical Officers, so does this one. This one needs Dilithium Ore, and this one needs Fleet Marks. You can earn Fleet Marks and Dilithium Ore and Officers by playing the game playing certain missions within the game. I could contribute some stuff here at the moment, but I've contributed a hell of a lot already, and I haven't got anything at the moment that I can part with. Besides, today is the day to show you around, not to contribute. There are other projects that can be completed as well, and more queued up for later. In fact, a whole list of them that we can queue up for later. I make sure that our fleet members always have plenty of projects that they can work on when they have any spare items they can donate. Although I don't expect people to donate to be part of this fleet. This fleet is more important to have strong fleet members who build up their own characters first. It's only the leftovers that go to the actual fleet locations, go to building up fleet locations. Because it's more important to have strong fleet characters than it is to have strong fleet locations. So I don't require donations. It's just nice if people do. As you can see, if we look at the leaderboard, you can see who's donated how much. And as fleet admiral, it's my job to donate the most. And so I have. Everybody else has been donating well, though, I see. I mean, if we look at our crew roster, we can see how many characters are in this fleet. I'm the only one online at the moment, but if we quick show offline players, you can see that the fleet is new, but for a new fleet, it's fairly active. Now, here we are at our start base. If we look around, over there you can see our industrial fabricator over in the sunlight. Let's just fly over to it and have a little look, a little closely. You can't go on board the industrial fabricator because it's just really a decoration. And it's a nice one to have, and we, this was the latest, the latest project allowed us to complete this industrial fabricator. And as you can see, there's a cargo ship heading there. And if we go over to this, what is this thing, you may ask? It's a transwarp gateway. Any ship that goes in there will accelerate to transwarp speeds, but only when it's finished being built. The fleet is doing projects to try and build this transwarp gate so we can shoot around the galaxy at greater speeds. As you can see, the construction's coming along, but it's far from finished. It takes a lot of donations to make that project work and if we fly around a bit more we can see our perimeter satellites there's loads of those perimeter satellites around and there's our communications array That's a good satellite because it allows you to create a holographic enemy to, 
test your weapons against. And down here. is the beginnings of our shipyard. Now, most of those are just donate, are just um, decorations. But if we approach this one, the starbase itself, once we get close enough, a little button will appear down in the side here that allows you to dock at the station. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dock at the station where I get immediately transported aboard. And here I am in our Starbase's transporter room. If we play it like this, we can get a better look at it. There's the transporter officer working away. So, the first look at the interior of our starbase. First video look, at least. Ooh, what's this? This is the operations center. It's kind of like the lobby of the starbase. As you can see, these things here are podiums for mannequins to be put on. And the mannequins will be wearing different outfits to, to show off our fleet uniforms and such. In order to get those mannequins we have to complete free pro fleet projects which are in progress. All fleet projects are in progress. Over here we have a console that allows us to change decorations. At the moment we only have one decoration and it's an out of date one called holiday decorations. So if I click the button Winter 2014, that was a project we completed last winter where we went to Q's Winter Wonderland and fought some snowmen. If I hit the button, it makes a holographic display appear of a Breen ship. The Breen ship was the main prize for playing that winter event. But I better switch it off because it's out of date. Hide holiday decorations. <clears throat> now, if we go up this ramp, stand over this little bridge, you can see the roof of the operation center where you've got a nice fancy view of space. When we first opened this star base, there were no windows there. There were just metal panels that you couldn't see out of. But thanks to somebody's donations, this project was quickly finished, much quicker than it should have been. And it was a very expensive project that required a hell of a lot of donation. And it was a member called Jamie who completed it by generously donating a massive amount of dinephium to the fleet. Jamie is a captain of a second life ship in Starfleet Renaissance as well, I believe. I was shocked at um, the amount of donations she gave when she joined the fleet. And it really did help to open up the Starbase and make it look much better. Over here is the conference area, which will eventually have a conference table when we complete enough projects. If we go back, we have a counselor, some replicators, a bar with a Ferengi, that's standard, you've got to have a Ferengi. This is like the Space Station's club. This is like our Starbase's club. On Earth Space Dock they have a club called Club 47. This is our own equivalent. It's nowhere near as good as the one on Earth Space Dock, but time and donations it will get better.
if we go back down the ramp. This round circle here on the front, a project will one day open that up to give us a window looking down into an interior docking bay where shuttlecrafts will be flying around, just like a Earth space dock where they have starships fly inside it, or well, down in here would have shuttles flying inside. But that's time and donations again. Over here, we have a holodeck. Standard holodeck. Very nice. This is an important room down here. This is requisitions. This is where you go to get your weapons. Your ground supplies. Your operations court must he provides special boosts for your point scoring abilities. A tailor to help you change your outfit. And just some guy. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, nice decorations. Even some Romulans there. Part of our star base. That's a bit odd, but maybe they're visitors, maybe they're not actually part of the crew. So that was a very important room. Here's another important room. This is where you will find the bank, duty officer management, which will be available eventually, personal character bank, uh, exchange email system. The email system is actually working because we finished the project that allowed us to send in-game emails to each other. Also over here, duty, duty officer requisitions for the personnel officer. And here you could have officer assignments where you can file commendation reports. Let me see if I can do any of them. Yep, I can do a military one. There we go. And your medical one. There we go. The development one. There we go. And it. Yep. Each one of those projects requires 10,000 project experience, but only after you've completed all the projects for a given field. For example, if you look here, I can click on this and go here. This is my experience, and it goes up to level 4 for each department. And as you can see, I'm at level 4 on all but two of them. Level 4 requires 100,000 experience points, or 100,000 skill points, I think it is. And once you've got a hundred thousand, if you get any more, if it's enough to equal ten thousand, then you can use them to do these assignments, which I just did. And each one of these assignments will pay off seventy-five fleet marks after forty-eight hours. And since I just did three, I'm about to in forty hours time I will receive two hundred and twenty-five fleet marks, which I can donate. 
to the fleet projects down here, fleet marks. And people have often asked me, once you've donated fleet marks, you well, any donation you make will reward you with fleet credits. Fleet credits, two million, that's how many I've got personally. Two million. Now, fleet credits, people have often asked me, what can they be used for? Well, I say to them, go to the requisitions room on our Starbase and find out. We can use them to requisition things. What things you can requisition depends on how far along your star base is based on what project you've completed. The more you complete, the more you can requisition. This guy's important, the duty officer. He can give me a mission, a small little mission, worth 20 fleet marks. And if I do that now, it's called the Officer of the Watch mission. You can do it once a day, once every 20 hours, because a Star Trek Online day is 20 hours for some reason. <laughs> Officer of the Watch, operating a starbase always requires a wide variety of tasks. Help keep the starbase running smoothly. Speak to the officer of the watch for specifics regarding your daily tasks. Oh, 30 fleet marks, not 20 like it normally is. Maybe that's because this week's Star Trek Online are doing a bonus fleet marks week or something. Or maybe they've just upped it to 30. Let me have a check on the calendar to see what's happening this weekend. No, it doesn't say bonus fleet marks. So they must have just upped it to 30 when it was normally 20. Either that or it's a glitch. Anyway, if I accept this mission, then I can ask him what it involves. A Starfleet dignitary is on his way to visit the Starbase, and we want to give him every appropriate honour. I need the Fearless G to act as Honour Escort. You will need to meet the dignitary's vessel at the Transwarp Gateway and then escort it to the Starbase. When you are done, report back here. I might as well do that now. Which means I've got to be into my ship. Which means I have to go to the transport room. Once I'm in the transporter, the transporter offers me options. I can return to sector space or I can beam straight to the ship or beam to the ship while it's warping to sector space. I'll beam to the ship. That way I stay within the solar system that our base is located at. Now if I fly off to a transwarp gate, I can signal the dignitary to come warping in and I'll escort him to the starbase. Escort his ship to the starbase. Here we are, let's slow down and stop here. And we signal the dignitary. And here he comes. Now we've got to escort his ship to the starbase, which means he's going to follow us in. And I can't go too fast, or he might get left behind. It's a simple mission. In fact, it's a dirt easy mission. Real easy. But then again, you don't get rewarded much, you only get 20 fleet marks, which isn't much at all. 
but it's something. Something like this shouldn't really have to pay much anyway. Yep, he's following me, and here's what looks like an outgrowth of the Excelsior design. He can't fly in a straight line like me, can he? There he is, following me in. Eventually he will be in range and he will be in aboard and his ship will disappear. Meaning mission complete. When we get close enough to the star base that is. Oh, keep an eye on that freighter. Ooh, he's going to be close to the dignitary. Nah, he's no freighter. We have freighters all the time. But they would dare challenge a starship so near to its base. There we go. He's beaming the board. And his ship vanished. It cloaked, probably. Alright, now with the mission complete, we can redock at the station. And then go and talk to the officer of the watch. To tell him we've completed his mission and the dignitary is safely on board. And that we want our reward for doing that. We want our fleet marks. Hey, mate, we've done your mission. Give me the fleet marks. There we go, he's offering them up. And I collect them. And it says I can't do the mission again for 20 hours. Well, which is fair because if people can do it over and over again, that's all they'll do all day instead of actually playing the game to earn their fleet marks. The fleet marks will appear in my inventory on the assets tab, which is here. Fleet marks 30. Now, I can donate them to the fleet now by going to the fleet, going into holdings, choosing whichever project I feel most needs it. Perhaps this one at the moment. And I can contribute 30 fleet marks. And it tells me, by contributing 30 fleet marks, you will receive 1,500 fleet credit. Okay. I just helped the fleet and got a reward in the process. There are much better ways to help the fleet than that. That is just the an odd daily one for a few marks that you need to finish out a project with. It's not really meant to be a proper donating method. Anyway, there's more to see here. Quite a bit more. Like the turbo lift. This will take us to my favourite place, but we'd leave that for a minute. Let's go to science. Turbo lift to the science deck. And here we are on the science deck. And guess what kind of rooms will be here? First we go this way. Through this door. And we have a Vulcan medical officer. A Vulcan personnel officer. A skills trainer. A skills retrainer to retrain your character's skills. Well, I can show you my skills right now. I don't need to retrain them. There they are. Mostly geared towards starship weapons and engineering skills and ground combat. 
and all in an engineering style because my character is an engineer. You can play three different characters on Star Trek Line, science officer, tactical officer or an engineer and I play an engineer. What I do on this character, this is a science lab. Let's go to the opposite end. Where we have the bridge officer trainer. And this is another science lab. Obviously this lab is biology because of the bio bid. The other lab had some kind of power source in it, meaning it was technology. So we got the biology science lab and the technology science lab. Now if we go here to the main part, we have sick bay. And there's the chief medical officer. He is able to heal you if you're injured. I mean, if I come here after battle and I've got injuries, I can go to him and get him, go to her, get him healed. It's quite a large signal because it's a Starbase one. I don't know if any of you remember, but I built a console just like that one in um, Second Life using Mesh. Anyway, let's go back to the turbo lift and go to another deck now. I'll go to my favourite deck, Engineering. Here on the Engineering deck, we go this way. Nice big corridors, very spacious. That door is locked off at the moment. There's nothing that goes beyond that door. They can't, I mean, they can't build an entire star base interior in this game, can they? So they only build the key like parts of it. At this part, engineering research area. Or is it an engineering monitoring room? Maybe it's auxiliary power. Many an item in these star bases has inspired my second life builds and my mesh builds. Because that's what this game is, it's all made out of mesh. Trouble is it's all professionals, no amateurs allowed to build, not like in Second Life. That's another dead end door. And what if we go in the middle room? Here we are in main engineering. And we have a ship's customization officer. She's the one who can have your ship's hull painted to your own customized colorings and patterns. Tellerite personnel officer. It's funny because sometimes he gets angry and starts smacking his computer. And what is that? Whatever it is, it looks fancy. We have an engineering repair officer who repairs people's ships when they're damaged. What is that? It looks like part of a preserver map, but without any map markings on it. Anyway, when you're in here, watch out for radiation. It's a dangerous place. Very technical. And then we go out here. Take the turbo lift to another deck. 
This is the command center, the tactical. Here we are on the tactical deck. That's a dead end over there, probably a security office or something. But through here is the most important part of the space station, the command center. Here we are. If we go up here, there's my chair, my command chair. There you go. Fleet Admiral Port Lexington in his Starbase command chair. Wearing full battle armor. Looking at his three main view screens. Each with a different bit of tactical information on it, plus he's got his computer readouts. And you can see other readouts as well at a glance. And behind him he's got an Andorian personnel officer, so he can requisition Andorian crew members. And if we go down here, we have the ship selection officer. She can sell you new ships. Oh no, she doesn't sell you new ships. She allows you to choose which ship out of your currently owned ships that you wish to use. It's the console that gives you access to purchasing new ships. So let's have a look at ship selection officer. Let's talk to her. That's my current ship. That's a green ship that I earned from doing the winter event. That's my Intrepid class. My Chimera Heavy Destroyer. This was this is the ship I should be using as an engineer. It's an Odyssey Operations Cruiser. It's a big ship. It's the biggest ship Starfleet make. Bigger than a Galaxy class. Much bigger. Bigger than a Sovereign. Starfleet don't make any shipping in there. And the good thing about this ship is that it has saucer separation. Yep. Its saucer can separate in times of combat. But not only that, on the back, it has a kind of fighter craft or captain's yacht that can separate away as well. Plus, it has a proper captain's yacht. The trouble is, the reason I don't use this ship like I should is because it may be big, but it's not very powerful and its turn rate is very slow. It's like a big bus trying to get around a tight corner. And there's my Sovereign class ship. Oh, this was my favourite ship for a long time. It's a Galaxy class ship, but it's a modified version of one. And it was my favourite for a long time. It really did do me well. Took many a screenshot using that ship. Here's a ship you might recognise. I just got that because I wanted one that looks like the one in the movie. Same with this one. I wanted one from the TV series. This one, another ship I won from the winter event. A Breen ship. This one, this was given to me, I think. I think it was Kondrak that gave it to me because he earned a load of them and was just giving them away. It's a mirror universe ship from the Human Empire. It's a science ship, a reconnaissance destroyer. And 
and this is my latest ship that I don't use very often but it's a great ship I call it the Grave Robber because it's a Kabali ship and you know who the Kabali are they're a race of people they're not born instead they find dead bodies and reanimate them there was a Voyager episode about it where Harry Kim's girlfriend came back from the dead <laughs> And this is one of their ships, I call it the Grave Robber, <laughs> which is appropriate. If you look at the front, the nose of this ship, anyone who's seen the movie Aliens knows that the person who designed this ship must have been a fan of that movie. Yeah, you, know, you can imagine Sigourney Weaver saying, get away from her, you bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Plus I've got some standard shuttlecraft, a nice runabout, and a captain's yacht. But I'm going to stick with my favourite vessel at the moment, the Fearless. Fearless G because it's loaded out with all the equipment it needs. Anyway, let's look at ship and shuttle requisitions. That's that console there that's splashing. These are all the different ships you can buy in the game. There's loads of them. And these are just the Federation ones. There's Klingon ones and Romulan ones. For all different ranks of player and all different types of player. Very expensive, but... You never get bored of... Spoiled for... You need to get bored for choice. You know, if we run around our tactical centre, this is like this Starbase's version of a bridge. Since only ships have bridges, Starbase has done. So this is like the Starbase's version of a bridge. Here we are, my ready room. Go over here and sit in my chair. Or at least I hope I can. Never tried before. No, can't sit in that chair. It's not sitable. Yep, my ready room. Nice pictures on the wall. Oh, look at that. That's a nice picture. Low res. Hey, what are you doing in my office? You're supposed to knock first. You naughty crew person. I gotta kick your butt. And you know your admiral standing right here. What are you doing? Accessing my personal logs? Ah, forget it. She's a trusted crew member. Now, let's go back to the operations area, or lobby as I prefer to call it. I think Star Trek Line Online got it a bit wrong, because isn't the tactical centre supposed to be called operations? And isn't this area, instead of being called operations, it should be called the lobby? I don't know. Or arrivals and departure lounge. What I like is the fact that you can see the sun from up on top of that bridge that we were on. Anyway, that's the starbase. We've seen everything now. So let's go and beam to my ship and go to our next location. I'll return to sector space, that means the ship is going to warp out of the solar system and I'm going to beam on board as it's warping out, which means the next time we see the ship, it will be in sector space, not in the solar system. Beam me up, Scotty!
So we don't want to approach our base because we've just been there. But it still gives you the option anyway. Let's fly away. The next place we're going to is on a planet called New Romulus. So we have to zoom out on the map and find where New Romulus is. There it is. Click on that to auto navigate there. And the ship will turn and head in that direction. Heading to New Romulus. It can't go to the first Romulus because that was destroyed by a supernova. A supernova happened in the Hobus system, I think. And its blast wave was enhanced by some sort of artificial subspace means which caused its blast wave to travel through subspace so it was a lot bigger than expected and it hit straight onto the home in the home world destroying it so the Hobus system blew up and destroyed the Romulan system so the Romulans that weren't on planet at the time weren't in the system were left to find a new home world and they found one called, I think it's called Valhalla in their language. In our language, we call it New Romulus. But that's where we're headed. Let's hit Quantum Slipstream Drive and get there quicker. It's a huge galaxy. This is just a beta quadrant. That's the entire galaxy here. Anyway, we're coming up to New Romulus. We don't want to overshoot. Here we are in the New Romulus system. Enter New Romulus system. The replacement home for Romulan people. It's funny that Star Trek Online went with the Star Trek XI story of Romulus being destroyed, but they didn't go kind of with the Vulcan being destroyed part. Maybe they know something we don't about time travel. Anyway, here we are in New Romulus, which has its own transwarp gate. It's on complete transwarp gate. Let's have a closer look at that while we're here. You can also see other players here with their ships and those big black ones are the scimitars. They're the most powerful ships in game. They're the ones that really hit hard with weapons. But a lot of players these days, they're not interested in how much damage per second they can do. They're more interested in just enjoying themselves because it's a waste of time to keep chasing damage per second you'd be spending a fortune on game if you do that but anyway that's what a finished transwarp gate looks like and our starbase one will look like that eventually but why are we here at New Romulus? I hear you ask. I said something about second location? Well, that's right. If we beam to our... down to the surface of New Romulus, we could either beam straight there or we could beam to the surface of New Romulus. So let's beam to the surface. Beam to the staging area. And I've got to bring one of my crew members with me because it requires a security escort due to it being a new planet and it's not entirely secure yet. So I need one of my others with me to act as escort. So there she is. I can't remember, is she my first officer or... Well, I don't know, but... I've got to put her in a skimpy short skirt because I'm a guy, what do you expect? Anyway, beam down. <laughs> 
we encountered the staging area of New Romulus. We could have been directly into the next location, but I'd much rather be just outside it first to get a look at the exterior then. Still loading. Why does it do that? Show you a little flash of the game and then continue loading the rest. New Romulus Transporter. Here you get access to on this side you get access to the in-game email system and the bank. On this side you get access to the exchange where people buy and sell the things they earn. If they, if they get a reward from a mission that they don't want, then they just can sell it on exchange to another player who does want it. And in return for the sale they will earn energy credits that they can use to buy anything else they want. I mean, they actually want. And there's the transporter console, which will beam you around the various places of New Romulus because New Romulus is a huge battleground where they're fighting corrosion and folians and insects and animals and doing all kinds of scientific research. It's a huge battleground. If we pull up the map, you'll see how big it is. There we are. I'm in this little area right here where I'm circling. But it stretches all over here. Up hills, up mountains, down into forests, everything. It's a massive background. And we're in this little area at the front here, called the staging area, and we're on this platform. And up there, there's a nice view of everything. You go beyond those mountains, this map stretches way beyond those mountains into other areas. Anyway, if we jump over the edge here instead of going down the slopes, I'm running along here. As you can see, my officer is following me, keeping a watchful eye on the Klingons that are here and the Rondulans. I mean, some of them are a bit shady. Anyway, look at this big building being constructed here. This huge, massive building. This is where our Romulan embassy is located. That's our one in embassy, that building. And if we click on our fleet button, go into holdings, go into embassy, you can see we call it the Renaissance Embassy in honor of Starfleet Renaissance, our parent group. Mary Key Command's parent group is Starfleet Renaissance, so we've named our space station after the main space station from Second Life, SS Merigi, and we've named our embassy after the group itself, Renaissance Embassy. And the message of the day for the embassy is, the Romans have the same potential as their Vulcan cousins. We must help them to, re to build a better future for themselves and for our own sake, for a future ally as good as the Vulcans. So we're hoping to help the Romulan survivors of the disaster. When the Romulan Star Empire collapsed, the supernova caused the destruction of the Romulan homeworld, which caused the collapse of the Star Empire, which caused the survivors to look for a better alternative to an empire. So they found Valhalla, this planet called Valhalla, or in our language, New Romulus. And they're being led by a noble leader who wants to create a better Romulan people. 
a better Roman government that is based on peace and mutual understanding and all that good stuff. And we're here to help him succeed. That's why we have an embassy here. And before we go into the embassy, you can see on the few pages on the embassy tab we have projects to donate to, just like the Starbase. Not as many, because the embassy doesn't take as many things as the Starbase does to build itself up. It still takes quite a lot though. Now if we go up here, what is this? What is that? It's a nice view. But what is that? What does it say? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yep, that is Spock. And that symbol is the Vulcan Edict, which stands for Infinite Diversity in Infinite Combinations. Yep, that was put there to honour the death of Leonard Nimoy. Yeah, the game felt they needed to do something to honour him because he did contribute uh, quite a bit of his voice to the game. Even though he was a very old man at the time, he still put his retirement on pause every now and then to add his voice to this game. He often gives descriptions of different areas of the game for new players new characters so they can understand what's going on. Anyway, if we go up here... Oh, there's a Centaurian there. I wonder what he does. I wonder if he's he there. There's a recording to review. Shall we review that? I don't know what it is. I think you've probably seen it before though. But let's have a look. Review recording. I've been authorised to allow you access to security tapes from the research presentation. Would you like to view them now? Okay then. What the hell? Review footage. I'm grateful for all you've done for our colony. We wouldn't be as far along as we are without your assistance. That's why I wanted you here today. To hear for yourself some of what we found. Doctor? What we found in our archaeological surveys is that the planet was populated long before our people arrived after the Sundering. We've discovered multiple ruins from that time period that correspond to the few historical records we still have. Most of our data from that era was lost with the homeworld. And the sword? I'm ready to confirm that the blade found at the battle site is the sword of the Raptor Star. We don't have a visual record of the sword, but the one we have matches written accounts, and a quantum analysis shows signs of master work. Something like this could have only been made by Saharian. We were right to come here. The sword will become a symbol of our reborn civilization. Uh, you were saying there was an earlier culture. What do you know about them? The oldest ruins we found are approximately 150,000 years old but I suspect that there may be some even older, based on preliminary findings that are still being analyzed. These people were quite advanced. While the oldest ruins show a culture that was defined by its devotion to a series of deities, later they developed technology, art, even spaceflight. Roughly 150,000 years ago, however, there was some sort of worldwide seismic event. Every volcano on the planet erupted presumably blocking out the sun. Ambient temperatures dropped dramatically. The radiation count spiked. We're still repairing that damage. The survivors of this cataclysm retreated to caves in the warmest areas of the planet, but they died out soon afterward. And what caused this event? We're still working on that. We have found a new site deep underground near an active volcano, but there are massive power spikes unrelated to the magma flow. If there is a source of the seismic instability, it should be there. We would have to send down a team to investigate, though, and it is quite dangerous. 
I wouldn't send anyone down without an environmental suit. I could go myself, but... I'm not ready to authorize you to do that, Doctor. Our people have too few scientists left. You and your crew are better equipped and trained for something like this. I know I'm asking a great deal, especially after all the help you've given us already. But your being here shows that my people and yours don't have to be adversaries. Not anymore. Not all Romulans think cooperation like this is possible. I do. Are you willing to see it through to the end? I think I already did see it through to the end. And I'm just watching an old recording that I once saw before. That's why it hasn't offered me a mission. Because I've already done the mission. Anyway, that guy in that video was called Detan. He's the new leader of the R Romulan Republic. It's not an empire anymore, it's now a, a republic. Trouble is, there are elements of the old Star Empire still hanging around. For example, the character Tashiar's daughter, Sela. She is the empress of what remains of the Star Empire. And she's a real pain in the butt, too. <laughs> anyway, let's go into the embassy, because that's why we're here. Visit embassy. You just go up to those doors, and you get a prompt that says, Visit embassy, and you click that prompt, and you're inside. Though you don't have to go to the staging area to and then knock on the door of the embassy to get in. You could always just beam straight in from your ship using the transporter here. Now as you can see my officer is no longer with me. She stayed outside because I'm safe in here to do all the Starfleet officers around to protect the Admiral himself. The Admiral who runs all this crap. Yep, and the other fleet members who come by here, their officers stay outside as well because they're safe in this, even though they're very important high up members of the fleet just like me. <laughs> it's the NPCs that we don't care about. <laughs> Anyway, this is the lobby of our star base. Oh, not our star base, sorry, our um, Renaissance Embassy. An embassy to New Romulus. To the Romulan Republic. And here is the Officer of the Watch. Remember on the star base we had an Officer of the Watch that gave us a mission? Well, she can do the same. She can give us a mission from the embassy, so let's do that. Welcome to the embassy, Admiral Exeter. Fleet Admiral? Not Admiral, Fleet Admiral, it says so up here. <laughs> it says so up at the top here. Continue. We need assistance with the following tasks. Embassy Officer the Watch Daily Mission. Let's see what that is. Embassy Officer Watch Daily Objective. Operating an embassy requires a lot of stuff and help is always needed. If you have time to assist the officer of the watch, will know what needs to be done. Speak to the officer of the watch for specifics recovering your daily tasks. You will receive the following. 900 skill points, 1000 expertise and another 30 fleet marks. Accept. What do I need to do? We have a long-range sensor satellite that appears to be malfunctioning. We fear it may have been compromised by the Tau Shiar. The Tau Shiar are what's left of the old Star, Rep Star Empire, led by Empress Sela. We need you to enter a new encryption algorithm. Take the Phyllis G out into New Romulus system and shut down the satellite, then restart it. Shut down a malfunctioning sensor satellite and download a new encryption algorithm. I can do that. 
So I hope we exit that and you've got the mission here on our mission tracker and I'm going to go and do that now before I show you around the embassy. Just to get it done. Which means I have to go to the transporter room and beam to my ship. I'm sure my officer would have heard by now that I'm returning to the ship and she'll do the same. Yes, you've got to role play a little bit. I mean, this is a role play game, and we are Starfleet Renaissance. It's a role play group, and they are our parent group. Maybe one day we'll be able to do actual proper group role plays here in Star Trek Online. That is um, the goal of our fleet to get real role plays going on, not just game role plays. Not just Star Trek Online role plays, but our own role plays as well. Anyway, let's find this satellite. So the mini map is pointing an arrow. If I zoom out, it's pointing an arrow at a target. And that's where we've got to go to find this. to recalibrate this satellite. So let's fly there. You can't go to warp speed because we're in a solar system. So we just have to rely on full impulse. Mm. And as you can see, all this stuff around Romulus is radiation. They're still cleaning up the radiation from what happened in the past history of this planet long before the Romulans ever arrived. I can tell you now that um, the Folians are on the planet. The, the Talshi have hired the Herogen to harass the Romulan Republic members. Ooh, I'm getting a bit close to the atmosphere there, bouncing off it. To prevent the, the Talshi have hired the Herogen to harass the new Romulus, new Romulan Republic. To prevent them from fall, from their to prevent their republic from becoming powerful, but also, also down on the surface there are Folians as well as Herogen. The Folians are there because they worship the previous inhabitants of this planet before that big volcanic event happened, and the previous inhabitants of that planet. Shall I do a spoiler? Yep, yeah, I will. They were the Iconians. And the Iconians are the current big enemy in this game. Anyway, where's that satellite? It should be around here somewhere. I think I'm close enough. Just going to find it. Oh, got a little bit further forward to go because it's a very hard one to find this one because it's a kind of spy satellite. Usually spotted by um, its flashing light because it's sort of black against space. Where is it? We'll find it. There it is. In we go. Fly up to it. And stop. And reset satellite. And we'll rotate the access codes. That'll help keep the Tauchihara away for a little while at least. Admiral, I have reset the satellite. It is currently powering up. No, you didn't. I did it, you silly woman. Yeah. My crew. Good God. They're only as good as the fleet Admiral that runs the ship, I suppose. Anyway, now we can be back to the embassy. And instead of going to the staging area this time, beam to New Armas, we'll go to beam directly to the embassy. Because you've already seen the outside of the embassy. Here we are in the transporter room. And 
Here's some run back to the office of watch and tell her we've fixed her darn satellite. And we won our reward. Talk to us of the watch. Well, come on, give me my reward. Well done. I know that you're used to running your own ship, but down here we can use all the help we can get. Come back tomorrow. I'm sure there will be more tasks that need to be completed. You will receive 900 skill points, 1000 expertise, and 33 marks. Continue. And I can't do this mission again until 20 hours, but then it, there's no guarantee it will be the same mission by then. Because they usually change the mission every couple of days just to stir things up. Anyway, those marks went into my inventory under the assets tab. There they are, 30 more marks. And I can give them to the fleet and I'll put them into the starbase again because everybody likes to have the starbase fully functional. So we add to it the 180 that's already there. We need 864 and we've got 180. If I add 30, that should make up to 210. Plus, it gives me an. Plus, by donating this much, I'm rewarded with 1,500 fleet credit to add to my 2 million. There we go. 210. What does this project do, by the way? This project, Station a Tactical Officer on the Starbase. Station a tactical officer on the service. The tactical officer will be able to provide additional duty officer assignments for fleet members. Interesting. That's why it's worth having a tactical officer, and that's why it's worth completing this project to get one. Anyway, now let's have a look around the embassy. You've seen the lobby here. What's this flashy thing? Bank service is not available because we haven't done the project for it yet. It's still early days for our fleet. I mean, our fleet is coming up to six months old and it usually takes about five years to get anywhere with fleet projects, especially when you've only got a few fleet members. we got about 20 with that. And most of them are just duplicates of the same person playing different characters, and several characters. They also said it's not available at the embassy, but it is the start of this. We've got that one done. And the exchange, that's, that won't be available for a long time. Now, if we go along here, here's the lounge, the bartender, and the chef. We need a new table there. Yep, the bartender in her towel. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the skimpy clothing they have here in this show, this game, they need to tone down on the sugar. <laughs> and as you can see, people's skin keeps flashing to purple. That is not a game fault. That's something wrong with my graphics settings that I'm working on at the moment. I have found fixes for it before, but because I recently reset my graphics to do these videos, the problem of flashing skin colours has returned. And I just have to change a setting in my graphics options for the game in order to fix that, but I'll do that when I've got more time. I'll do that when I've done this video, I think. Anyway, we go up here. We don't go up... Yeah, we go... From the lounge, we don't go to the lobby. Instead, we go up this side door here. Up these huge... Steps here. Here you can see the force fields over the doors for hematic sealing, hematically sealed. 
or something like that, some sort of medical seal, medical grade seal. That's because this is a science lab. And the reason there's a big science lab in our embassy is because New Romulus is an untamed planet at the moment, and we're helping the Romulus to tame it. That means studying the various life forms here, cataloging them, and also trying to clean up the atmosphere, clean the radiation away from the planet. Because once all that's done, it'll be a beautiful, perfect world for the Romulans to start afresh, as they are trying to do. Eventually, when we complete a project here at the Embassy, we will lose this wall, and instead there'll be a kind of glass instead, and beyond the glass will be plants and trees from the various parts of this planet, and a few animals in there as well. It'll be like a little zoo cage, like an arboretum. Where we can study the animals and they won't even know we're here because of the one-way glass or whatever it is. And also this wall will remove eventually with a project, but I believe that's uh, much later down the line. And it will allow us to look down into the lobby. Like a balcony down into the lobby. The wall would change to glass. Now, instead of going out the door we came in over there, we'll go out this door on the other side of the lobby. Through the quarantine seal. As you can see, the lobby is now on the other side. Because that tunnel over here is where we went upstairs, and this one is where we come downstairs, the other side of the lobby. But there's a room at the end of this corridor. Guess what? This is my office. Like the ready room in the style base? Well, it's a ready room in the office. In the embassy. Anyway, there's not much to see there. Now, we can go over here to find the turbo lift. And in here, we've got a choice. We can go to the Ops or the Shuttle Bay. Let's go to Ops first. Operations Center. It's like a tactical area for the Embassy. Kinds of readout screens. They're all in green there. They should have colour on those screens, not just green. And if we look around the edges, these consoles will eventually have functions when we complete projects. I think this one would have the Taylor service for changing outfit. This one will have. Operational Asset Requisition Service. Ah! That allows to requisition ships, I think. Oh no, re requisition um, point boosts. Boosts for gaining points. Contact Federation Recruiter or Duty Officer Requisition Service. This one, Bridge Officer Requisition Service. I don't want to go back to the elevator again, to the turbo lift again, because I'm um, going we'll look down here. And look at all this computer readouts and holographic displays. They look great. It reminds me of the old place from Memory Alpha that used to be a planet here in Star Trek Online until they replaced it. It was the planet where people crafted new equipment. But the crafting system was replaced with the R&D system. 
Chris section development system. So. This is just this is the only place left that one of the few places left that reminds you of the old memory alpha site. So back up to the turbo lift. Turn around one last big look. That's our tactical center, operation center. Ignore that, that's just a game pop up telling me that somebody has worn a ship and uh, somebody I don't know. Go in here. Now we go to the shuttle bay. This is our embassy shuttle bay. Isn't it great? The roof is open to allow the shuttles in and out. I think there's a project that allows you to close the roof. Actually, I think when you first acquire an embassy, when you first start a fleet and your embassy roof is closed, your shuttle bay roof is closed, and you do a project to open it, and then another project that allows you to toggle between open and close. I could be wrong. Anyway, we've got some consoles here. Space equipment requisition. Ground equipment requisition. Requisition consumables. If I click on that, it will show us a store. And these are consumables that are for sale. Or they would be for sale when we complete the project that activates this vending station, this shop. Psionic generators and stuff. They confuse enemies with telepathic energy or something, sci-fi energy. And if we go up here, we can get a nice good view of the whole place. Our shuttle bay. Our Romulan Embassy Shuttle Bay, or the Renaissance Embassy Shuttle Bay. Renaissance Embassy Shuttle Bay. That's odd, the way they designed that. You'd think they'd fix that. The game developers would fix that. I mean, curtains aren't supposed to go through floors. Ooh, look at that, a Romulan transport craft and two Federation shuttle craft. Let's jump off the end here. Nice to check out everything. Oh, that is a nice looking view, though. Apart from that curtain glitch, it's a lovely view. Oh, look, there goes a transport craft right past us. Now, I believe there is a project that you can do either at the starbase or the embassy or both, and um, it allows you to take a shuttle craft to and from the embassy. You just go to a shuttle craft pilot and ask them to fly you to the start from here to the starbase or you, on the starbase you go to one and ask them to fly you here. You don't have to take your ship. You can just hop on a shuttle that's going that way and they'll take you along. Save you having to travel from one place to another, instead you can just instantly load the next map. Instead of having to go through several maps to get here. You can just instantly hop on a shuttle and load this map. Talk to transport officer. I'm sorry, I cannot provide transport to your fleet starbase. 
You must unlock Tier 2 at the Embassy Progression and complete a special project to gain access to Fleet Starbase Transport. See what I mean? We're a very new fleet, and a very small one, so it's going to take us a long time to build up the special abilities of these locations, but they're getting there. People are donating well. And We're making do with the fewest, with the few people we have. Trying to recruit more. Anyway, let's go back to the lobby. And then from the lobby, instead of going into the lobby, I took a while to load. We can leave. And go to the staging area. Leave the embassy and go to the staging area. My crew member wants to escort me again. She doesn't feel that it's safe to let a ranking officer walk around by himself here, just in case a sniper decides to take him out as a target of opportunity. And here we are, back at the staging area, outside our embassy. I suppose it will let me zoom out. Also, one more interesting thing. Over this side, here where the covers are, that's a big cliff. And guess who lives down in that cliff? Let's jump down and and walk over there. We can't go down there because we're not allowed. Visitors aren't allowed down there, apparently. But guess who lives down in the darkness down there? Underneath it all. The Remans live down there because they don't like being out in the sunlight, so they've got big sunshades to protect them. Well, while we're here, we might as well have a little look around the staging area, since it just happens to be right outside of our starbase. Not too much of a look, though. There's a landing pad with a Romulan transport on it. There's makeshift places. That's because this is going to one day be the first city of the new Romulan Republic. But it's going to take them a long time to build it. It's like a new colony just starting out. There's various shops here you can visit, vendors who supply you with stuff, there's various assignments and missions you can get. I mean for example, if we run over here, just beyond the staging area there's a this bridge will take you out of the staging area. It's a long, big, fancy, well-designed bridge. And it will take you out of the staging area into the wilderness where you'll find Herogen and Folians and wild animals and plants and Romulan researchers trying to map everything and catalogue everything. It's a beautiful location this map is. Until the Iconians turned up and tried to burn it all down. But that's another episode later on down the line. Yeah, here's a bit of view of the embassy. Still under construction by the look of things. 
Nice moon there. Not half naked Orion's running around. You bet they're played by teenage boys. Well, just by horny men like me. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually have an Orion character, but I haven't played her. I just got her through the first half of the tutorial and then abandoned her and just left her to use as inventory storage. One day I'll get back to playing her. Anyway, that's the staging area. Over here, there's a Klingon. He's putting the Romulans through their paces. Give me 20 push ups. You want to fight off the bad guys and establish your new home? Then you better be fit and healthy like a warrior. Yeah, do some push ups. That's why the Empire is here, to help you build a new home, a better Romulus. It's also why the Federation's here, but we're better than they are. They're helping out. We'll make you do push ups. <laughs> oh, nice sun. Anyway, that's the staging area, just outside the Embassy which is a social zone for everyone. The embassy though is for our fleet only. Every embassy exists there, but I suppose it's like each one is on a different dimensional plane. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in the Star Base. But our specific locations, nobody can enter but the fleet members. The only people, the only time non-fleet members can enter our locations is when we invite them. And any fleet members welcome to do that. I've got no problem with you inviting others to our locations. We might tempt them to join. To join the fleet. Anyway, now we've seen this, let's beam up to our ship. Now that we've seen our embassy, now we'll go along to the next location. <coughs> now in order to go to the next location, we have to leave the new Romulus system. Good bother about Hella. Is it that hole or that or something like that? Loading deep space. <laughs> <laughs> that is a binary star system, just like the original homeworld. Ah, that's the name of it. Mole Rehan. That's what it is in Romulus. Romulan language. And there it is down there. You can actually see it moving, spinning. <laughs> well done to the developers, I exclaimed. They really did do some good graphics. Anyway, our next location is a rather special one. Although there's not much there, because it's still early days. But it is in an unusual location. So let's open up the map and plot a course to here. Dyson Sphere Gateway. No need to access transport because it's pretty nearby. Well, it's actually quantum slipstream drive, but the speed of quantum slipstream drive is measured on the transwarp scale. My ship does actually have transwarp as well, you see. But you have to complete projects to get, personal projects to get, to 
be able to transwarp around and, well, I've completed many of them. I can transwarp to Earth, or the Delta Quadrant even, on Deep Space Nine. But I won't do that just yet because we're going in here. We're going to enter this Iconian gateway, a space gate for ships. And we're going to go to... We're not going to use the gateway to go to the Delta Quadrant, we're going to use the gateway to go to the Solony Dyson Sphere. We don't actually know where the sphere is. We know the Janolan Dyson Sphere is in a specific location in the Delta Quadrant, but we don't know where the Solony Dyson Sphere is. We just know the gateway can take us there, I believe. Let me read. I hope it doesn't say where the Solonade Dyson Sphere actually is. It just says that this gate will take you there, so let's go there. Here we are, inside the Dyson Sphere. We just came out the other gate. When in one gate, came out another. Think of it like Stargates. Because that's exactly what they are. Our current gateways are the same as Super Stargates. And this is inside the Dyson Sphere. And if we just get out of the way of these other players for a moment. You can see there, that big spire is the command center for the, the, for the Federation Klingon Romulan Joint Task Force assigned to the Dyson Sphere. Their job is to fight the Voth and the Undyne. The Voth are those dinosaurs from Voyager. And the Undyne, they're better known as Species 8472. And we know that the Dyson Sphere were built by the Iconians. And they're the big bad guys. The demons of light and air, or whatever it is. Anyway, if this is a Dyson Sphere, and I've always had a problem with this, there's the land which is obviously the inner surface of the Dyson Sphere. And if you look up into the sky, you can see the opposite surface, which you shouldn't be able to see from here. If the Dyson Sphere is as big as a solar system, you shouldn't be able to see the other side of it. And there's also a sun in the middle. There never used to be. It must be a recent addition because they realised that they created a map about a sun. Anyway, instead of going to the command centre where the, they have the bank and the exchange and all that lot and access to the battleground on the surface, and instead of going over into the far sunset where they have access to the space, but to the non-ground battlegrounds, you can't say space battlegrounds because it's not space, it's inside a dinosaur sphere. It's non ground battle zones, starship battle zones. Instead of going to any of that, let's go this way. I can't go too far in here because I haven't passed the flight test for flying within an atmosphere. And my ship's not designed for it either. Travel to Fleet Dyson Sphere. 
That's the spire. So what does triple two feet spire is what it said. And here we are. Somebody might recognise this image because I took a screenshot of it once and it was used at the Starfleet Renaissance booth for this year's sci-fi fair. Anyway, this is our own personal spire, belonging to our fleet and only fleet members have access to it and those that fleet members invite. No one else. This is our area, there's nothing in the area, just the spire. And if we contact traffic control, we can even dock at the spire. And go aboard. I suppose it's like flying through the upper atmosphere of a planet without the burning friction. Anyway, here we are in the in our spire. As you can see, we don't have access to this room, but there is a project underway. That is um, that will give us access to it, and it's all it is is a conference room. Over here, you can see the storage area, which will eventually become the bar. Over here, these big areas. If you look through, you can just about see the atmosphere outside. That's because they're protective shutters and we need to complete a project in order to get them open and have access to the balcony out there. Here we have a very special person, this Fariki officer. If you click on him and go to his store, see that he sells these consoles. These consoles are highly sought after in the game. We haven't got access to them yet because we haven't completed the project to give us access to this shop. That's why they're all greyed out. But that is a main goal. We've also got warp cores, advanced fleet warp cores, elite fleet warp cores. Everybody wants these. And it's important, as soon as we have access to this project, I'm putting it up there. Because I know every fleet member will appreciate having that one. I know I will. Over here, acquisition ground equipment. I'm not exactly sure what she sells. Oh yeah, kits. Handy kits, like um, Batman's utility belt, except that it's a kit. <laughs> Not a bell. That's what your character can use. If we look at my character, you can see he's got a kit on at the moment, and inside his kit, he's got all these gadgets. He's got a medical generator, a beam turret, a force field dome generator, a personal shield boost and an equipment diagnostics kit set. In other words, his kit isn't that good right now. But then I don't often use kit abilities, so I've been a bit slow to get them sorted. I could do it right now if I wanted to, but get them sorted out right now if I wanted to, but yeah, no need. I just prefer to shoot, I don't like to use all that fancy stuff. An engineer is supposed to join team ground battles. An engineer is supposed to lay down things like mortars and turrets and all kinds of things like that, mines. But I don't bother, I just take my TR and shoot. <laughs> TR rifle and shoot. I like to spam everything up. Now up here, Eventually, 
this area up here will be the command area but we haven't got access to it at the moment we've got to do a project that will extend the ramps that will curve from there down to here and the same on the other side and give us access to this command area where it's like the bridge of the spire and down here eventually will be the exchange and the bank you like that animation? and the steps that appear as you go by them Very handy. Yep, the Dyson Sphere. Our Spire. Well, that's that location. I told you there wasn't much here, but it is very special. Let's contact traffic control and go to the next location. When you hit travel to allied space, which means leaving your fleet spire territory, going to shared territory within this within the Dyson sphere. Or you can just beam up to your ship and stay within your fleet territory. Or you can return to sector space. Now I assume return to sector sector space means to go through the Iconian gateway reappear in the Romulan area of the galaxy but when I press it that doesn't happen instead you end up in the shared area of the Tyson Sphere I think they need to update that text you see Now let's go to, not now because we've just been there, let's actually instead of going to the gateway and go back to sector space instead, let's transwarp, that way this wall means nothing, the outside surface of the sphere means nothing when you're at transport speed because you're going so fast you won't even well you're traveling outside of this universe or something <laughs> so physical barriers don't mean nothing at transport speed so let's choose transwarp and transwarp to deep space nine we can't transport to our fleet dilithium holdings no we can't Oh, one moment, I forgot to show you the fleet projects. Holdings, Spire. There we go. It's called the Sky Tower Command. The reason I called it the Sky Tower Command is because it's in honor of the leader of Starfleet Renaissance, Kira Sky Tower. Commodore Kira Sky Tower. She leads the entire Starfleet Renaissance group so it was only fitting to name something after her so we named it the Spire, the Sky Tower Command and the message of the day is the Voth, the Undyne and even the Iconians we must gather our allies to overcome all these threats before they overcome us and as you can see we have our projects going here I hope Kira don't mind me naming that after her. I'm not sure whether she knows or not. I think I did tell her, but I don't know whether she'd remember. Anyway, let's go to Deep Space Nine because that's near our next location. Transwarp. It's quicker than any other form of travel. Pachoon! And 
here we are arriving at Deep Space Nine. Now, we don't want to go to stay at Deep Space Nine because that's not where we're visiting. So we don't want to go there. If you want to see what Deep Space Nine looks like, I've done another video where I play an episode called the second wave and that is set all inside Deep Space Nine that, that video so if you want to see inside you can look at that video although I warn you it's 2 hours and 11 minutes long and it's a lot of me running around and talking crap but since we're not going to visit it right now let's depart the system to travel to our final Meriki Command Fleet location which is around here somewhere unless they moved it since they changed the map there it is just a little bit oh, right, around the, just a little bit around the corner let's leave so it's base nine in Bajoran territory. And go to our final Meriki command location. because I've got something more important to do. I'm showing people around our locations. And here we are. This is the location. This is our private area and it's the location of the Firelight Mine. Go to our fleet page, go to our mine. Here we are, the Firelight Mine. I call it Firelight after Commodore Teresa Firelight. She, in Second Life, I'm a member of her crew. I'm the chief engineer on her space station, SS Meriki, and her starship, USS Galilee. And I figured since she's my commanding officer, and she's the one who originally gave me permission to start this fleet, or rather she put her support around starting this fleet until I got Starfleet Renaissance permission and without her support it might not have happened so I um, named our Dilithium mine, our fleet's Dilithium mine I named it after her, the Firelight mine Dilithium mine message of the day this dependable place will always be here for us to get what we need to fight the good fight. The thing about a dilithium mine is that Star Trek Online, they brought in the dilithium mine as part of a fleet, as part of the fleet locations for smaller fleets. That's why the projects are much easier to complete and progress with the mine is much quicker than it is with the other locations because it's meant for small fleets that can't afford to build up a star base or an embassy 
who aspire. So they have the Dolithium mine, which is quick and easy to build up apparently. I don't find it so, but that's what Star Trek Online people made this place for. Added this place to the locations for. Anyway, if we fly around a bit, it's an asteroid built by the Agas Giant. What I would have known is what are these things? There's one. There's another. Processing facilities or something. Gas giant, like Neptune. And as you can see, these asteroids are covered in dilithium. Absolutely covered in them. Now, if we take a look down here. Just around the corner here. Where is it? It's here somewhere. I know it is. Oh, maybe I went past it. There it is. There it is. That is our ground facility. It took us a while to get this opened up because you don't have it when you first start a fleet, you just have the territory, you don't have a ground facility. But we worked hard, me and the other fleet members worked hard on donations, and we built ourselves a ground facility. Oh look at that, that is a ship down there isn't it? And it's firing a beam. Oh, I want a closer look at that. I haven't seen it before. Oh, that's an exclusive for this video then. It's not been done on pictures. Ah, that's what it is. It's a mining laser. Look at it running out. Perfect symmetrical mining pattern. Oh, our asteroid's got a donut in it. That's an exclusive of this video. I haven't thought of that before. Didn't even know it was there. Anyway, back up here. Contact traffic control, we can then visit the surface, the ground facility. Oh, look, it's a Riemann. And here we are. This is our dilithium mine. Very small, but it's only meant for small fleets. You can see the nice big chunk of dilithium right here. A representation of what dilithium looks like in its unrefined form, apparently. Dilithium crystals. Dilithium is one of the main currencies in this game. Along with energy credits, fleet credits, fleet marks, gold press, latinum, lobby crystals. Photographs of Q. <laughs> Lorette stones. All kinds of currency in this 
Now we have a very neat equipment vendor. What has he got? Look at his store. Ooh, he's selling consoles. Engineering consoles. What that? What those are is enhancements to your ship's hull plating. For example, neutronium. Neutronium is the same kind of stuff the Doomsday Machine is made out of, which makes it the strongest substance known to exist in the Star Trek universe. And he sells them. And they're already purchasable. Some of them are already purchasable. The Mark 10 ones are anyway. And each one does something different. Like plus 18 kinetic damage resistance, plus 18 all energy damage resistance, plus 9 structural integrity. Makes your ship a lot stronger, in other words. And each one enhances something a little different. This one makes your turn rate better. This one up here makes your power transfer rate better. Oh yeah, they've got these consoles as well. What do these do? Monotonium. That's another kind of armour. And then we've got enhanced RC consoles. Ah, these ones make your ship turn faster a faster turn rate. And these ones are already available for the price stated. Fleet credits and when you donate fleet marks or anything to the fleet projects. When you donate anything to a fleet project you'll get fleet marks in return. When you donate anything to the fleet projects you'll get fleet credits in return. And fleet credits can be used to buy stuff like this. This one takes 12,500 fleet credits plus 2,400 dilithium refined dilithium. I could buy it right now if I wanted to. But that's what fleet credits are used for, to purchase fleet only items. And they are the best items in game. Especially if they're Mark 12 or 13 and they're very rare or ultra rare the higher the mark and the higher the rarity the better they are and when we complete projects we'll be able to get better rarity and better mark equipment over here mail service not available typical over here. Exchange not available. Typical. Um, this guy here is a special guy as well because he gives access to War Cores. Oh, wow, the advanced War Cores, they're all available. And the advanced singularity cores for Romulan ships. Advanced fleet warp cores and stuff. And they're all marked 12 ultra rare. I am surprised if people haven't bought any of these. If they haven't bought any of these, I'd be very surprised because these are very good. They're not as good as elite ones though, but we can't buy them just yet. Over here we have a personnel officer that will sell you miners. Not as in children slave labour. <laughs> <laughs> miners as in people who work in a mine. Although I can't buy the rare ones yet because we haven't finished the project to allow us to buy rare or very rare. But we can buy the uncommon ones. They're Ferengi miners, Uridian miners, and Hortas. 
Do you remember the Horters? No kill I or Spock doing a mind meld with one and going, the pain, the pain, and they lay little round eggs. And there's actually an episode in game that where you can acquire a Horter as a pet. In fact, I might have one somewhere in one of my banks. This guy here is a special guy because he has access to assignments. Investigate rivers of rich mineral deposit. Okay, we'll start that assignment and it takes 18 hours to complete. He's got another one here. Investigate rumors of rich dilithium vein. Let's start that one, another 18 hour assignment. Now let's have a look at what those assignments award. In progress. Just the latest two. Development experience, trade experience. Oh look, 250 dilithium more for that one. And this one. Nearly a thousand energy credits. Energy credits are the main form of exchange in the game for use on the ex main form of currency in the game for use on the exchange. Now, over here is a big space door. Eventually, when we complete a project, we'll be able to open that space door. And there'll be a force field there to maintain the atmosphere. Just like opening a shuttle bay door. Except that once the door is open, we'll be able to put on a spacesuit and walk through the force field and go out into the mine and start mining dilithium. Our very own personal dilithium supply. The space suits will be placed around here somewhere on hangars when the project is complete. But also there are other projects like there's one that will remove these shutters from the floor and replace it with grid or with griddle plates so you can see down the inner workings of the mine the inner workings of the refinery and also this roof will eventually be removed because there will be an upstairs where you can which is which will have a balcony that looks down over this area but there will also be another upstairs where there's a lounge but all that takes the completion of donation projects. So it'll be a while before we have any of that. Anyway, that's our phenomenal fleet location. it from Ergy Command Fleet Locations. Now, I'd like to show you Meriki Revenge Fleet Locations, but it's a waste of time going through most of them because the Meriki Revenge is the other fleet. The, on our, our other fleet on our Klingon side. Starfleet Renaissance has two fleets. One is Meriki Command, the Federation one, and the other is Meriki Revenge, the Klingon one. Now, in order to show you Meriki Revenge, I'll have to change character to a Klingon character. So I'll log this character out and switch to my Klingon character called Chunk. He's a big gorn. There he is, Chunk. 
He's the alpha leader of Meriki Revenge. Now I'd like to show you the locations for Meriki Revenge Fleet as well. But I can tell you right now that the Spire, the Embassy and the Mine are identical to the Federation ones. The only different location is the Klingon Starbase. So it's a waste of time. Oh, shut up. She's just offering me a mission that I don't want to take right now. <laughs> yeah. So, um... The Embassy, the Spire and the Mine on the Klingon side are exactly the same as they are on the Federation side. So there's no need for me to give you a tour of them since we've already done it on the Federation side. However, on the Klingon side, the, the Starbase is different to the what it is on the Federation side, so that's where we're going to go now. We're going to transwarp to Cronus. Ooh, the graphics went a bit off there. see this is Chunk's ship he's actually called Chunk 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 and this is his ship with the Riemann prototype shield it's a brilliant looking shield even if it's not very good but the ship is awesome looking with that shield on it view of it. It's even got a tactical mode which causes its ask to expand. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but I press it like so. Anyway, let's leave the Cronus system, which we just transwarped to. We transwarped from Bejor to Cronus. Now we leave the Cronus system. Because it's nearer to the uh, Merit Revenge star bases. Here we are in space, let's now access the minimap and navigate to our Klingon base. Oh, I just love the look of this ship. It's not a very good ship, it keeps blowing up in combat. It's a science vessel, because Chunk Chunk Chunk, <laughs> or Alpha Leader Chunk, of Miriki Revenge. He is a science officer, so this is a science vessel, I think. And I'm not brilliant at playing science characters because they have all kinds of different science abilities that I don't quite understand. They're needlessly complicated. Well, not needlessly, I mean, they are scientists, but. They're for players who would like a little bit more complication with their stories. Anyway, here we are approaching our Klingon Starbase. Our, Kling our personal Klingon fleet Starbase. Approaching the system. A little bit closer. And then we drop out of the warp and into the system. Whenever you're in deep space, you're in, you're just assumed you're in warp. Okay. 
why would you stop between the solar systems? There's nothing there. Is it the occasional battle? It's still going out alone. Here we are! Mary can revenge Starbase. There it is. With its shuttles flying around to and from. And as with the Federation Starbase, it also has satellites. A partially constructed transwarp gate. What will eventually be an industrial fabricator. And off in the distance somewhere, which we can't quite see from here, is a similar shipyard. But no need to show you them since they're only decorations. Instead what we do is we dock at the station. Yep, we're loading, loading, loading. Loading with lag. There he is, there's Chunk with his Kabali split beam rifle on the back, I think it is. Or is it just a polar on split beam rifle? That's what I think it is. It's not a very good one, but it's good enough. There he is, wearing the fleet uniform. Um my Federation character wasn't wearing the fleet uniform, he was wearing his elite armour, battle armour. Whereas Chunk hasn't earned battle armour yet. So he is wearing American Command Fleet uniform, which was designed by Massa Solo. I asked him to make it look aggressive heavy metal like, because he's into that sort of thing. And he did a good job, I think. I mean, it looks like he's covered in lava flows. And he's got that Klingon spine thing. Yep. Massa done us proud with that uniform. Anyway, this is the transporter area. They don't have a transporter room, they have a transporter area. And if we go down here, this is the lobby. The Starbase lobby. I think one day there's supposed to be something here, but I have no idea what it will be. Only a project will be what it will be one day. Over here behind this glass window we have a conference area and if we go through this door we have our lounge that fire will one day be lit and that stage will one day have an Orion stripper on it I kid you not, that's what Klingon star bases get. They get an Orion dancer on the stage. I bet that project will be expensive though. <laughs> anyway, go through here. Klingon technology is odd. Whatever all this is, I don't know. Oh, you can't go in there. Let's go up these steps. And here's the operations center. Some nice views on the view screens. You've got the consoles here. What do they do? Bank service. 
file commendation report. I wonder could I do that? No, I can't because I haven't completed the appropriate commendation projects. You've got duty officer services. What's he doing? A personnel officer. And the mail service. All not available. But we've really got to kick these donations in the arse a bit for this fleet because it really does need to move along a bit. I mean, I've been donating what I can, but there's not as many members of this fleet. Not many people are as interested in joining the Klingon side of things. Anyway, just like at the Starbase and the Embassy on the Federation side, also at the Klingon side, Starbase and Embassy, we have Officers of the Watches. The Spy and the Mine don't have Officer of the Watch. Anyway, let's talk to him, see what mission he's got for us. Because I always like to do these Officer Watch whenever I'm here. A KDF dictator is on his way to visit the Starbase and we want to give him an appropriate honour. I need to the registry for to act as honour escort. You will need to meet the dignitary special at the transport gateway and then escort. <laughs> it's the same one we got at the um, Federation Starbase. So let me beam up to my ship and do that quickly. You may not get many fleet marks for your fleet projects doing the Office of the Watch daily, but you do get a lot of experience points and skill points. And a lot of people tend to not realise that, and that's why they don't go to their star bases very often. But it really does help with specialisation projects. And those are the projects you tend to do after you've reached the maximum level of 60. Anyway, let's beam to my ship and do this escort of this dignitary. No chunk, we mustn't kill him, we've got to escort him. It's dishonourable to kill a dignitary. So, let's get this done quick. And look at the slow turn rate on this ship. Yeah. Looks like the transport bay is further along on the Klingon side than it is on the Federation side, even though nearly everything else on the Federation side is further along. Single dictatory. There he is in his Nagbar class ship. There's a bigger one than the Nagbar on the Klingon side. There's a Fortress, or whatever it's called, something weird, I can't pronounce the name. But it's bigger than a neighbor, and the neighbors are big. Come on, Dignity, follow me. But then you're in a neighbor, and it's got a hideously slow turn circle. If I get too far ahead of him, he will lose me, and I won't be able to escort him. Come on, catch up, you slow coach. Ain't got all day. Let's reverse up a bit. See if he picks up on us. Come on, dignitary. Come on. They should be following us now. Do you need me to lock a tractor beam on you and pull you in? 
Kerr and Barrager. Ah, there he is, he's starting to follow now. Whoever's piloting that ship must be drunk. Must have had too much blood wine. And we can speed up a little. And then a little more. And nurse made this dignitary. To the bar, to the star base. watching that trailer. We don't want any um, assassins on board. Yeah, I thought so. Stared him down. Stared him down. <laughs> Come on. Such a slow process. Another freighter just warps in. That's the thing. Um, that's another thing. Um, the dignitaries can transwarp into the transwarp gate even though the transwarp gate isn't finished being constructed yet and isn't online. Well, they probably just lock onto the gate's signal and use it as a point of reference for their own ship's transwarp engines rather than using the generating transwarp gate. Anyway, that's that. That's that done. Let's dock. And collect the reward. Loading, loading, loading. There we go, it's starting to move a bit now. Let's go back to the Officer of the Watch. Just jump down there and along there. And tell him... Give me my blood wine. Exit. Done. There's 30 fleet marks right there. That can be donated straight to the fleet. And I think I'll donate it to the Dilithium mine because the Dilithium mine on this Klingon side of things hasn't got a ground facility yet. So we need to get one means we need to finish up a project. However, I think all the um, fleet marks on this side are done. So, I'll donate them a bit later in a minute. It's a nice hologram of the station there. Now, when we um, finish out a project that's going to cost about 200,000 dilithium these shutters will be removed and they'll become windows all the way around big open windows just like on the starbase has a ceiling of windows just like on the federation starbase now we've seen all there is Whee! Save using those steps or the side steps or the transport steps. We can now go have a look along here. It's 
through there to the holodeck. Even Klingons have holodeck technology now. And that's the story from Starfleet. The textures on these Klingon things are much better than they are on the Federation side. Nothing in there? Nope, dead end. The most unused corridor on Klingon star bases. Because I don't, I've never heard of a holodeck, on a, even on a fully complete fleet, I've never heard of a holodeck actually having any functions. So let's go along here to this room, important room, it's requisitions. Just like on the Federation side, you have the fleet ground supplies, the quartermaster, and the fleet space supplies, and the outfit tailor. Oh, I like her short skirt. She's quite attractive for a Klingon. Didn't think Klingons wore short skirts. Anything to see a woman in a short skirt, hey, bring back. The short skirts, up with hemlines. <laughs> and that's the requisitions room anyway. Now we take the turbo lift and go to science. Came on science deck. So Klingons have science officers. Really? I don't think they're interested in such nerdy things. Well, let's have a look and see which of these doors leads to a science bay. Not that one. Oh, why that one blacked out? Oh, it's an Orion. In a short skirt. Huh, that's surprising. Normally they just wear a piece of cloth. This must be sick bay. Cling on sick bay where warriors go to die. Go to be put out of their misery. Because warriors don't give in to illness or injury. But if it happens, then there's no point in saving them much, we just put them down. Because they're weak. And if you do so you might get a promotion. in there? Nope, not yet. Or it might never be, that's the turbo lift. I believe, yes. Nothing in here, nope. Ah, there's two rooms here. What's in this one? Bridge officer training. And gone requisition. Ooh. Alright, buddy. <laughs> nice to see someone from the home world. Not Cronus. The gone home world. This is some sort of technological research area. And obviously this last room through here on the science deck is biological research, probably. And there's a skill reader 3 training officer in here. Oh, quarantine field, can't go down there, there's biological weapons being made to fight off our Federation's scummy enemy. Although we do make peace with the Mercury few now and then because there are bigger enemies out there to fight. Okay, that's the science deck. 
Now let's go to the engineering deck. Now before we go to main engineering, there's nothing through here. Nope. What's through here then? Ship customization officer, Orion personnel officer. Hello. So this is another requisitions area, but a different kind. Give me a bat lift. I don't need no gun. Bat lift. I'm Klingon. Well, I'm not gone, but still. I'm a gone who sided with Klingon. And through here, main engineering, and it's a much different from the Federation one. As you can see, it is huge. Level 6 security protocols are in effect. If we go around here, you can see just how big the Klingon reactor is. It's huge. And all sorts of spinny parts too. I wonder if I jumped on them, would I spin around? Never tried it before. The answer is no. Not only is it big, he was saying there's nothing like a good battle. <laughs> Not only is it big, you can run underneath it. They say if you work here long enough, it will knock ten years off your life. <laughs> and the control panel. This is very inspirational for builds and things, for a second life building and mesh building. Especially the consoles. And the piping. And what's in here? The chief engineer's office. The engineer actually has an office. And an icon of Federation Starbase. And that's the engineering deck. Here yeah, I forget what was through there. Oh yeah, requisitions. Well, let's take the turbo lift now and go to tactical. Now what's down here? Where are you going, my dear? You realise that door's locked as well, did you? Slap her on the butt as you go by. It's the Klingon way, you've got to role play it. Ah! Brig officer, we're in the brig. This is where you turn over prisoners. Not that we have any, by the looks of things. No. That's where you get that project to, to, to transfer prisoners to slave convoys and things. Prisoners you've captured in battle. 
and then there's the tactical center look at that that's a lovely place to be conference table Norsican personnel officer nothing through there another conference table and another yep Kenos love to talk about battle nothing through there I like that floor Good overview of the tactical center. Nothing from here. Nope. But there is something through this one. I knew there was one somewhere. This is my office. Because I'm Alpha Leader and this is my ready room for the fleet. And up here in the command section, we've got the ship selections officer and the starship requisition, the starship and shuttle requisition panel. And the starship and shuttle requisition panel. And there's all kinds of KDF bird of praise, vulture class ships, raptors, neighbors, everything you could want. All for a price. So, we've done the tour now. Back to Ops. That's the tour of Miraki Revenge. But I'd like to take a moment to go to New Romulus and visit our Klingon Embassy there. It's exactly the same as the Federation Embassy, but I can do the Officer of the Watch mission there again because I'm on a different character. So, goodbye Starbase, return to Sector Space. <coughs> I think the only real difference between the other locations The other location is the mine, the embassy and the spire. They're the same on both the Klingon and the Federation side, except for the non-player characters that are stationed there. The non-player characters are different species. I mean, on the Federation side you have Vulcans and Bolians, and on the Klingon side you have Gorns and Orions. But otherwise, the other locations are practically identical. The only one that's different is the Starbase itself. So let's go to New Romulus and do that project. That is, do that mission. And let's hit Transwarp if I can find where I put it. There it is. Travelling to New Romulus, where we've gone are quite welcome. So once we're there, we might have to put some Romulans through their paces and make them do 400 sit-ups. <laughs> Either that will have a couple of Orion females on the arm, as the beam tail. That might make me more approachable. Oh, bounced off a planet and a star. 
here we are at New Romulus. Now instead of going to the staging area like we did before, because it's exactly the same, in fact it is identical, let's go to the embassy, which is also identical except there's Klingons there instead of humans. Klingon fleet embassy, and a little bit of Klingon decorations at stand up but it's still basically the same. You get the idea. They're just a little difference in colouring and decoration, but the embassy, the spire and the mine are all the same. Observe the watch. Continue. Embassy daily. Accept. What do I need to do? A member of the High Council is in route to New Romulus. He is no friend of the Tavishara. We are concerned that they may be planning an ambush. As a security precaution, I need your ship to rendezvous with the vessel, the councillor, and with the councillor and escort into range. I can do that, my dear. Glad to help. Let's get that one done quickly. You can see that's the door out to the staging area to New Romulus. Staging area which is and the staging area is the access to the battle area. Beam two ship. Now I would go to the Dilithium mine on the Klingon side, but we haven't got a ground facility yet. Therefore, we don't have an officer there to, help, to give us those duty assignments. Therefore, there's no point in going there. Because there's nothing to gain. Here we are. Before I signal the dignity, let me just turn this ship around. Because Last time we did this, the dignitary found it hard to follow me. Signal dignitary. There he is on his neighbour. Is he the same guy? Doing a tour of our facilities. There we are. Come on, guy. Follow me. I'll take you in. I thought you were Klingon. I thought you didn't. were afraid of the Tao Shiar. Some Klingon. I wonder you're a dignitary. Or you're fit for pushing a pen. Me? I prefer to wield a bat lift. Where are you going? Is this way to New Romulus? Oh, I went too fast. Come on, there are no Taoshia. Not with me around, they keep a wide berth. No on their most wanted list. And it's not because they think they can catch me. That's because every time they try, I blow them with the smithereens. And other times as well, just for the fun of it. That makes a nice screenshot, I would. Two clean ships and a transwarp gate. I'm often hitting the screenshot button just to see if I have a chance upon a good shot. He's been down. Now his ship can cloak. Oh, 
Oh, it doesn't disappear so much like it does on the Federation side or on the Starbase side. Anyway, beam down. Go to the office of the watch. I've completed a stinking ass bullshit assignment. And I want 20 marks. Yeah, that's that done. No need to go anywhere else in here because there's nothing else to see. Unless you like looking at a Ryan booty. But if we go onto our page. You can see that this is the Meriki Revenge Fleet and its message of the day is Glory awaits us! And if we go onto our holdings page, there's the star base called the Thunderclack. Message of the day. From here we can plan the smackdown of our enemies. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do the path. And we have projects going, but I can't do any fleet marks because they're all full. Then we have our embassy, the backstab embassy, that's this location. We call it the backstab embassy because we don't like Romulans very much, we're just here because of the propaganda war. The Federation are here helping the new Romulans and we don't want them to gain the new, the new Romulans as allies because it would make them too powerful so we're here to counter their friendship with the new Romans by becoming friends of them ourselves. But once they reject the Federation and join us, we'll then stab them in the back. <laughs> well, at least that's my take on it. <laughs> Embassy message of the day. Let them think peace is on our minds. Then let's show them that the Empire conquers first and talks later. And these projects, the fleet marks are for, so I can't donate them here. And there's the Spire War Chamber. Let our enemies rule the day, they heard our name. Yep, that's quoting Chancellor Garron, who's been dead for 30 years in this storyline. Killed by Wolf. And his replacement, Martak, is also dead. Killed in a jewel of honour. We can't donate my marks here because um, there's no room for him. And then there's the Dilithium mine, Warrior's Refuge. Every warrior gets weary of battle. This is where we can recover to fight another day. And all the marks filled there. So I've got 60 fleet marks and nowhere to put them. Typical. Anyway, that concludes my tour of both Meriki Command with Old Lexington, Fleet Admiral, and Meriki Revenge with Chunk 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 Alpha Leader. hope you enjoyed watching through this and I hope it persuades you to join our fleet and even to play Star Trek online in general. Okay, thanks for watching. Kobla. <laughs>